Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Awesome. I am so sorry. There was some technical difficulty, but we're here now. Thank you for joining. Um, I am Sneha, uh, and I'm so glad to connect with you all. Um, I have a little bit of a presentation that I prepared, but we don't uh, actually have to stick to it. If you have questions, I'm happy to answer as, as we go. Um, so while I'm trying to figure out how to share my screen, um, don't actually know how to do that right now. Um, let me see, share my screen. Okay. I think it's going to be a bit hard for me to share my screen because I don't really uh, know this interface too well, but um, that's fine. Uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Sneha. I um, uh, was the head of product uh, for a team called The Service Platform at Spotify as of last uh, two weeks ago. I'm uh, in between jobs and I'm switching to uh, a new job. Uh, um, starting on Monday that uh, I haven't uh, publicly disclosed yet, uh, but you'll be the first to know. Uh, I'm joining Colibra, which is a vendor for data governance and data intelligence, and joining them as a director of product, leading their platform ecosystem. So I'm super excited about that. Uh, it's been a while since I switched uh, jobs, um, and uh, in a way, I'm uh, you know perhaps in a similar boat as some of you who are thinking about their their next gig and how to break into uh, product management. My background really over the past couple of years has been uh, specifically in um, platform uh, product management and I'm going to talk about what that means in a second. Um, and uh, uh, besides work, I think it's also good to know who we are as people because work is not our only identity. Um, uh, I am a mother of two uh, little kids. I'm actually in uh, one of the kids' rooms, so you can see a little belly uh, <laughs> um, a bed sheet behind me, and that's my little kid. Um, and uh, I am also uh, uh, a dog rescue uh, worker. I, I enjoy working with uh, little pups, getting them to a better home. Um, and uh, when I'm not working, I, I enjoy uh, weightlifting. It's, uh, it's a good stress buster. And I think as uh, product folks, uh, you kind of need to find what that thing is to mentally and physically you know, stimulate uh, your energy and balance the chaos, because uh, as much as I love product management, I think uh, uh, most PMs would agree it's a very chaotic world that we live in. Um, I, uh, so a little bit about my career. I'm also monitoring uh, the messaging. So if you have questions for me, uh, you know, feel free to ask them um, um, and I will, you know, uh, keep looking for specific questions that I can help you with. I'm here for you. Uh, I understand, uh, you know, uh, making a pivot uh, towards product management is is never an easy one. Um, so uh, while I'm monitoring the messages, I'll keep talking, but feel free to, uh, uh, you know, uh, interrupt me at any point. Um, so a little bit about my career journey. I uh, started off as a developer um, uh, back in 2006. Uh, I got a degree in um, a GIS, which is Geographic Information Systems. Um, and then I uh, quickly, over the next two and a half years, I um, uh, networked really hard uh, with um, a lot of nonprofits uh, who were uh, sort of in that sphere and landed a very cool gig at a NASA data center called CSUN um, and uh, worked as an individual contributor as a data engineer uh, for about four years. And uh, through the work I did, I, I found that I was leading uh, 
product and project uh, initiatives um, at a very large scale uh, at the data center. And I, I really truly enjoyed doing that. Uh, the bigger the complexity, the more the dynamics of decisions and stakeholders uh, and different types of uh, use cases that came in, the more I enjoyed, uh, you know, sort of developing and, and working through uh, solutions through those challenging uh, moments. Um, and uh, I worked at a few media houses like New York Times, Comcast, uh, which is an ISP, as everyone knows. And then I landed at Spotify. So I've been at Spotify for six and a half years. So, uh, and it's a, uh, it's a lovely organization. I, I couldn't recommend it more. Um, uh, um, I'm guessing everyone has probably heard of the brand, but it's a music uh, streaming uh, platform that uh, pivoted to audio first uh, a couple of years ago. So uh, Spotify is way more than just music. It's uh, audiobooks, it's podcasts, and uh, you know, so many uh, more experiences that uh, we keep churning out. I say we because I've been there long enough that it's become a part of me. And what I did at Spotify during my time was uh, I worked uh, with growing the data analytics capabilities. So if you experience a personalized experience uh, uh, at the com um, uh, on the platform, it comes from us understanding, deeply understanding your taste, understanding the genres that you uh, uh, are uh, have a natural affinity to, and perhaps uh, uh, you know exploring uh, affinities that you haven't been exposed to, introducing you to new indie artists and new uh, you know, uh, types of, uh, you know, music genres that you are, haven't uh, really been exposed to with the intent that that might expand your world. You might actually enjoy it. Or if you don't enjoy it, you'll let us know and that will help us find a more fine-tuned, fine-greened experiences for you. So that's what I did for the first two years. Uh, I helped uh, churn out the analytics that would personalize that user experience for you. The next two years from 2018 um, to 2020, I, I helped Spotify uh, through uh, the chaos known as GDPR, which is uh, really to help uh, um, you know, hold users, uh, hold companies accountable for user data and to help uh, consumers get more control over what data is exposed by and is owned by companies. And if you're uncomfortable with the, the amount of data that any enterprise has, you have the right to ask for what they have and ask them to essentially scrub uh, their ecosystem of, of uh, your information. And uh, that uh, was a very, tough job because no one had ever done that before. It was uh, a compliance rule that had come uh, been initiated by uh, the European Union, but had soon become like the ways of working for many different countries. Uh, California uh, state had also adopted a similar policy um, than Russia did, than India did. And so governance uh, and, and data governance was top of mind and uh, working through those challenges with, uh, with data infrastructure teams, uh, working out uh, how to build um, capabilities for engineering uh, teams like developers within Spotify, which at that time were um, about 4,000 strong uh, and helping them understand that as they were building features, personalized experiences for consumers that they needed to think through uh, why did they actually need um, a personal user information? I and mean, in 99.99%, you don't actually need to know who a user is to serve them a specific experience. You can do it anonymously. Um, and, and that was such a fun experience. Uh, I really grew a lot. I learned a lot. Uh, the company was growing tremendously at that point as well. Um, and then uh, over the past two and a half years, uh, I... I moved into uh, you know, leading Spotify in its cloud journey. Uh, so back in 2016, I believe the GCP journey had started. So Spotify moved from the data centers to uh, Google Cloud Platform. Uh, we did a lift and shift. If uh, folks are familiar with what that is, just take your um, environment, take all of your applications, shift it onto the cloud. Uh, we were one of the first on GCP. It was a wild ride. Uh, you know, it was a cool collaboration with Google. Um, and then 
the next uh, you know era of like being on the cloud is optimizing your applications so that they're uh, more conducive for uh, you know um, app modernization. So uh, uh, being able to uh, push code uh, more often uh, and uh, to test and release more often and to be able to observe patterns of uh, uh, you know, incidents and uh, like uh, optimizing the response time to incidents is, uh, becomes more and more critical. So that's the kind of stuff that I I, I, I worked on with my team, um, uh, both as an IC and then uh, a manager and then a manager of managers. Uh, the growth uh, was tremendous uh, 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 in a span of 2.5 years. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was wild. It was crazy to go from, uh, you know, through such a steep learning curve because being a product uh, individual contributor, um, uh, focusing on the craft, focusing on the end user is a different skill set than, um, uh, you know, managing a team of uh, brilliant uh, uh, technical product managers. And then, you know, the scales are quite different when you're leading in teams uh, uh, that are led by uh, by leaders as well. Um, and I'm happy to talk through all three of those journeys um, as uh, that's what I've experienced. Um, and essentially that's what I mean by uh, my, my career has essentially been building platforms, uh, whether in uh, for NASA's data centers and uh, you know for remote sensory imagery, whether it's for GDPR compliance for Spotify and ensuring that we have uh, checks and balances to respond uh, to users and they need to understand what we have and what we know about them and to be able to do that responsibly or whether it's uh, scaling out the capabilities to stream data to stream uh, like these massive uh, um, uh, consumer experiences efficiently at scale on the cloud uh, I've done that, and uh, I uh, there's just so much to grow in uh, in the sphere, and I feel like I'm at the start in many ways. Uh, there's um, and uh, it's it's something I've thoroughly enjoyed. So that would have been my presentation for you um, uh, in a nutshell. Um, if there are any questions uh, that uh, you have, uh, feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, I see a lot of introductions. I see a question, are you currently hiring product interns for summer 2023? I think that's a great question for Spotify. I, uh, as I mentioned at the start of this, I, I no longer work at Spotify. I left the company about two weeks ago, uh, but uh, there are several uh, uh, summer internships uh, uh, um, and there's like a, a cohort of summer interns that are hired every year. So I would recommend going to the job site and uh, sort of watching that space for dates and uh, you know applications and how to go about it. Um, I, ho I hope that uh, answers uh, Shristi. I hope that answers your question. Awesome. Um, anyone else? I'd love to hear from the folks. Uh, I see there are about uh, at least twenty people on the call. If, if not more, I can't actually see the whole list. Um, I'm just going through the chat list. What do you see? So a question from Samuel, what do you see the future of music beyond streaming? Oh, fantastic. Uh, uh, if I was Oracle, I would say that, um, and again, this is totally my opinion, but I think that um the future for music will always exist it's such a fun experience it's um it's such a personal experience too like the music i like uh based on my identity uh, uh versus what you assume i might enjoy versus what i actually enjoy uh there's just a lot of complexity and a lot of like uh you know psychological metrics that go into like the choices we make at every stage of our life so as a child, as a teenager, as, as a young adult, as a parent, it keeps changing, it keeps evolving. So there's always more to explore. Um, and now if the question is about um, how does music evolve, um, I think we're seeing it. Uh, we're seeing uh, music um, um, as a short format. Um, uh, we're seeing podcasts as like a longer format. 
we've seen people, artists sort of experiment between, uh, you know, the piece that they uh, create and then releasing content around how they created it in the form of podcasts. And, and that in itself becomes an album of content, uh, which is very interesting. So if you're like uh, me and you're, you're crazy about uh, a specific, um, you know, show, uh, like uh, I, I loved Game of Thrones. I, I wanted to know how they compile like uh, uh, the battles and how did they produce those, uh, 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 those pieces. I would actually dive into the extra content and I'd listen into the podcast and I'd listen into uh, other fans and what they're thinking about and how they responded to like a specific dialogue or a specific point. And, and that's just the way we're consuming content right now. So I don't have a specific answer. I think it's a great question. I think uh, the, um, we're going to see how things evolve in, you know, tangible experiences, in-person experiences, face-to-face -face concerts. COVID has, you know, sort of shown us that uh, we need to get comfortable with, uh, you know, being at home. And so how does that change the way we experience concerts um, and, uh, you know, those virtual experiences versus people are dying to go back out there. Um, so uh, physical uh, stage experiences are also uh, here to stay. So uh, I, I don't actually know. I think things uh, will evolve as they always do. Um, but just watching um, trends is, is, I guess, what I would do if I was in the music streaming, like industry as a product manager, to listen, to watch the space, to watch what uh, uh, customer needs are and evolve that experience accordingly. Um, Samuel, that was a very long response, um, but I hope uh, uh, <laughs> that got uh, got somewhere. Um, all right, I'm going to try to go faster with my responses here. I see a lot of introductions. Hi, everyone. Hi, Suman. Hi, Nikita. Hi, uh, Snehal. Um, you have a question somewhere in there. What would your recommendation be uh, to a new grad entering product management, especially considering the current job market? My heart goes out to everyone who is uh, starting out right now. I know, I feel it. Uh, the recession is hard. It's it's a tough time, um, no doubt. Um, uh, but uh, if you know, if my experience um, uh, matters here, I would say that I graduated with uh, as an immigrant. So I'm. I wasn't born in America, I was born in uh, Dubai and I moved uh, to America to study. And I had, um, I, I was a student on a F1 visa and I needed a job after I graduated. And I graduated in 2008. And if you'll remember, 2008 was perhaps one of the worst recessions of our time. Um, and uh, I, uh, I was struggling for a good six months, interviewing, you know, posting my resume, networking as much as I could, doing everything that was within my control and not really getting a lot of callbacks because people, folks were not hiring. But um, I, I think at that moment, uh, I, I just kept going and um, that would be my recommendation. I know it can be demoralizing uh, when you, know, you keep doing what you're supposed to do, but the outcome uh, that you're looking for doesn't quite hit. Um, um, but keep uploading your resumes, keep connecting with hiring managers, whatever hiring managers uh, do, do share their contact information, get in touch with recruiters at the companies you want to connect with, try to go to like, uh, you know, you're here right now at this career fair, maybe, uh, you know, uh, a connection is made right here, right in this moment. Uh, share what uh, what's your passion, what is it that you're looking for, uh, what uh, specific roles uh, would be interesting to you. Um, um, I would challenge you to, to dig within uh, your own uh, skills, your own capabilities, uh, along with where you aspire to be. Because sometimes there might be a gap between, you know, where you'd like to be uh, and the skills that uh, the company is looking for versus what you have at this you know point in time uh, the, you might need to you know take like an abc sort of journey to get to that you know that that role that aspirational role or that aspirational company that you're looking for and that's okay um you know life isn't linear and let's stop treating it linear um these are the cards that we're being served 
uh, a recession is, uh, or macro recession, or macroeconomics as they call it, um, you know, it's happening. It's it's not great, uh, but I'm convinced that uh, connecting uh, with people and um, you know showing your positive intent, uh, showing what you're passionate about, demonstrating that. Uh, maybe through some projects that you have, uh, maybe writing a personal note to a hiring manager about a role and how that connects with you. All of these things uh, make a difference and uh, don't stop. Don't give up. Uh, that's the one thing I, 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 I really hope, uh, you, know, uh, you, you know, you take with you. Uh, I, I know it's hard, uh, but you got to keep going. Um, I hope uh, that helps them in. Um, uh, and Sneha. Uh, Ishita, uh, I see a question from you. Hi. Um, always wondered how could Spotify improve the experience for the artists and still be profitable for both? Are they already on it? Um, I, I think so. I mean, we've been doing it for a while. We've been serving our artist community and being equitable with how we pay in comparison to labels in general and other streaming platforms. You know, the numbers are out there. We, uh, Spotify is very competitive and, and, uh, and does uh, uh, do as much uh, as they can to keep uh, the music industry uh, as equitable for every artist. Um, in fact, uh, you know, Spotify is also leaning towards helping individuals, uh, you know, create their own destinies. So, uh, you know, we have a mission to, to serve as many creators so that they can live off of their art. Whether you're an independent, uh, you know, musician looking uh, to, you know, collaborate with, uh, you know, famous artists and and join their band, or whether you are an indie artist that, you know, want, wants to sort of bring your creation uh, forward, there are all of these tools and ecosystems that have been created on Spotify specifically for creators, um, and um, uh, at various different like. Uh, um, equitable uh, thresholds, like there's a free experience, there's a premium experience, and there's like, you know, the platinum experience for, for those who are backed uh, uh, by large enterprises. There's advertising and getting your name out there. Um, so I, I think Spotify is doing a fantastic job here. Is there more work to be done? Absolutely. But uh, um, that would be less of my concern uh, at, at this point. And um, I think as a $20 billion company, I think they're quite profitable and uh, they're, they're doing, they're doing fine. <laughs> um, what else can I help you guys with uh, while I'm here? I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. Uh, nice to meet you all, Jyoti, Aditi. Sam, uh, I see a question here. As a hiring manager, how can a career changer to product make an impact via their application and convince you to take a bet on them particularly someone who's moving from another part of death that is customer success and operations um i think that's a fantastic question and i sort of touched on it in a previous response you always want to bring your transferable skills to your next job i uh, i think Everything that you've experienced in life makes you a better, uh, you know, employee at the next uh, company that you join, and it's especially true in product management. So, when you say customer success and operations, I I see a lot of breadth of tangible, transferable skills that you come that you get with that. You pro as a customer success person, you have probably uh, interacted with multiple edge cases and uh, lots of different scenarios of you know what gets in the way of uh, of a customer truly benefiting from a feature, or service, a product that be is being put out there. So how do you sort of uh, translate what you have experienced, the breadth of knowledge that you've accumulated through your, the careers that you've had, the experience that you've had, and put it on your resume, a static document. I think that's the challenge. Uh, but you don't have to limit yourself. If you have a powerful story, 
Uh, your resume may be a good start. You know, try to find metrics to document your achievements in, uh, you know, the business wins that you've had during that time, during those roles that you've had. Uh, quantify it. Uh, you know, if there's revenue goals or number of customer touch points that you've had, or uh, you know how you've actually made a customer's life better. Uh, uh, what did you do? What did you specifically do in order to get there? Uh, what and operations may be uh, similar, uh, like how have you enabled a, a, a team or an organization to uh, be more operationally effective? What have you done? What are your accomplishments? So that's your resume. But then there's also the option to write, uh, you know, a blurb, uh, a, a traditionally known as a cover letter, but it could just be an email to the hiring manager sort of saying, hey, I see you have a job here. I'm super excited to apply for this. This is how I believe I would be an asset to your organization. And then write about that experience that you have that directly, yeah, you know, that you can connect to the uh, role that you're applying to. Um, uh, I, I think as humans, we're always looking for connections. Uh, so if you can find what that common ground is that connects to like a specific responsibility on the job posting to a thing that you've achieved, that might just be it. Uh, or uh, it could, you know, I would steer uh, away from just talking about how uh, you aspire to be a part of a brand. Um, uh, and, uh, you, you know, you're a big mega fan of a company and you're aspiring to just be a part of it. And it would be your life's biggest, uh, uh, you know, goal to just be there. I mean, that's great. You know, being a fan, uh, fan boy, fan girl, it's great. I've done it. I, I enjoy it. But how does that help the hiring manager make a decision about your skill set? How does that help them understand? I mean, clearly you're passionate about the job or you know, the company uh, and all of that. That's great. But passion uh, is, is one um, dimension. There's, you know, there's tangible hard skills as well. So uh, I would um, say balance your messaging to the hiring manager with passion along with like, this is what you get out of, you know, uh, out of the experiences I've had. This is how I enabled you. Um, and I will stay online for as long as you guys want. I have a hard stop as, um, well, I said as long as you all want, but I have a hard stop at one, but I'm here till uh, till then to answer any questions you have. Uh, but for those who need to bounce to like another session, thank you all. Uh, this has been great. Uh, and uh, I've dropped my LinkedIn um, uh, link uh, on my bio page uh, on Hopin. Uh, feel free to connect with me and, uh, you know, all the best. Uh, you know, I, I love what I do and I uh, welcome you to, you know, growing in, uh, uh, you know, as a product leader, as a product manager, as a first, uh, you know, associate job as a product manager. It's, it's great. It's exciting. It's a wild ride. Uh, thank you all. Um, for those who are still on, um, so I see a note from Katya. Uh, if you haven't already, fill out the networking form and stay connected with everyone. Um, um, please do. I'm here. I uh, I love product school. I love what they stand for. So um, I'm gonna uh, keep doing what I can to keep this industry going. Um, Any other questions for me, folks? Uh, I see a question from Bhaskar. Uh, can you please share how did you keep yourself motivated while looking for full-time roles during the 08 recession? How did you keep yourself positive? Um, I think that's a really good question, Bhaskar. Um, it was tough. Uh, I won't lie. I, um, I you know, I definitely had moments where I wasn't sure that I was actually going to be in the country for very long. Um, but uh, I think in those moments, surrounding yourself with family and friends who, you know, who are always going to be there. Like, I think all too often we think of our job as our identity and our singular identity, which is a really harmful place to be. And it's taken me many years to sort of find a balance uh, and to see my world as as many things that uh, that you know in, in combination sort of make me happy, and a job is important. Obviously, like, it helps you achieve the things you want. It helps you buy the things you need. It helps you live a comfortable life. Um, 
Um, and but family is important too, and uh, surrounding yourself with a community is really good. Um, I, I remember um, joining multiple associations at that point. Uh, I'm Indian. I joined like Indian professional networks. Um, I uh, you know I enjoyed connecting with others and just sharing notes about what was happening. Uh, how were they going about it? Uh, there were a lot of, uh, you know, fresh grads who were in a similar situation as me. And just talking about it somehow made, uh, made your heart uh, lighter in that moment. At least that's how I felt. Um, uh, I know a lot of people, you know, took, picked up hobbies, uh, you know, when it hit the gym for an hour or two, just to sort of bust that anxiety that's building up. Um, and... Uh, whatever ways you find to cope with the anxiety that you're feeling at least that's how i felt um is um is it's personal and it's what you need to do for yourself um and i wish you the very best i know this is a tough time uh, and if you want to connect uh, and talk more about it i'm i'm happy to uh, you know take a call and just chat um hi sheeta i see you from pict go go um and i am looking through everyone's notes thank you all it has been wonderful connecting uh here um uh, it's so great to see so many new introductions and new faces um I see a question from Steve. Uh, consider, consider yourself as the product. Consider the user, the employer, and their needs. And what are the key features that are important to them? Then make sure your product, you as a candidate, speaks to those features in the marketing materials and actual feature set skills. Oh, wow. I love that. Absolutely. Uh, I couldn't have said it better. Yes, you are the product. Uh, you are connecting with your user. So find the audience and, you know, work on your pitch um, and keep working on it. You know, practice makes perfect. So if, uh, uh, it, you know, uh, maybe connect with Steve. Uh, he might help you get that pitch right because I, I love what he just shared. Um, Cecilia, uh, nice to see you too. Uh, do you have any recommendation to practice hands-on hands skills? when you're looking for PM jobs? Absolutely. There's a lot that can be done. If I had presented my slides, uh, I had actually put together some materials that uh, could be helpful. Um, I see, so the industry is constantly moving and every company sort of has their way of building product, but there is some consistency in the way planning cycles work. So getting familiar with um, OKRs, objectives, key results. If, if this is new to you, uh, there are multiple references, uh, books uh, on what is uh, what are OKRs, how, how are they sort of written, uh, how do I sort of get comfortable thinking about uh, objectives and business outcomes versus outputs. Um, that's like a mental shift for a lot of people. So if you already know that, great. But if you don't, uh, I recommend sort of understanding and, and reading about uh, um, outcome-driven and outcome-oriented roadmaps. Um, uh, there's also lean business uh, models um, and building out canvases for every single initiative that you are responsible for, starting with the why. Like, what is it uh, that I am responsible to uh, for? What is the mission I'm on? Uh, what does the customer need? What does the business need? Why is it critical that we build this feature today? We're, uh, like, why are we well positioned to do that? That's what uh, a, a, a lean canvas can help you achieve. It can help. It, uh, it provides prompts of questions to ask yourself up front and then fill in, uh, um, um, fill in uh, the blanks as, as, you, as you go. And it also helps you identify, like, you know, what do you not understand about uh, the opportunity that you've been placed on? And it helps you, you know, put your energies towards ask, uh, getting uh, those answers. Like, what are the KPIs that w uh, will define uh, success for the feature that I'm uh, launching here. Uh, is this just a business outcome and uh, there are no customers out there who really want this? Well, that may be a reason to go back to your leadership and sort of um, ask them, well, 
help me understand what is the customer need here? What is it that, uh, uh, how will they benefit from this? Um, there are a lot of biases in, in product management, um, biases from leadership, by, uh, biases from executive, biases from our, ourselves as we build products. And I think as a product manager, the best skill that you can hone in on is how to unbias yourself over time. How do you uh, sort of ask questions? Like I, I start with assumptions, we all do, but how do you sort of check those assumptions uh, along the way? Um, um, so assumption mapping, lean canvas, uh, uh, you know, building on a lean uh, business model canvas, um, you know, understanding outcome oriented roadmaps and OKRs. Um, I think this is a good start. Um, I'd also recommend some books that uh, I, um, I'm, I find always at my end table as like uh, something I reference often. Um, and the refresher helps me uh, personally as well. Um, I love Good Strategy, Bad Strategy by Richard uh, Ramalt. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a book that's been around at least for a decade, if not longer. But uh, it's a classic. It uh, sort of demystifies what is a strategy, uh, what is what uh, what makes uh, for a good strategy, um, and uh, how do you sort of um, check yourself as uh, as you find yourself going down a rabbit hole of uh, you know um, writing a doc and assuming that that is uh, you know uh, is strategic direction enough for your team. Um, another book, uh, uh, and basically anything uh, uh, Marty Kagan is something I recommend. I think he is a pioneer uh, in product management, and um, I like his um, uh, book Empowered. Uh, but I would start with Inspired if if you haven't read it. Inspired is uh, you know series one. Empowered is more for leaders. So if if you are looking for uh, to lead a team of uh, product managers, designers, uh, I think that's a really good book. Um, and then uh, I think something that uh, leaders in general and something I actively practice uh, can be, be better at is vulnerability and knowing when to say what you're good at. And knowing uh, when to admit that you actually don't know and you don't have the answers. Uh, um, and uh, Brenny Brown has written a really good book, uh, Dare to Lead. Um, and I highly recommend uh, you read it. Uh, maybe it helps you become more empathetic uh, towards those uh, you connect with and collaborate with. Um, uh, all right, folks, I'm going to take one more question and and then I'm going to have to bounce. This has been fantastic. Um, and I'm scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And I think, okay, I see Katya, thank you so much for sharing my slides uh, for whatever reason I wasn't able to. Um, uh, but I guess that's it, folks. All the best. Uh, and. Uh, I see I, a few things on LinkedIn, so I'm going to uh, start responding to those. But uh, great connecting with you all, and have a wonderful rest of the day. Take care. Bye.